Welcome back to my series, Dance Mums Unedited. This is the series where I discuss production notes written by the producers of Dance Mums, which show us what happened behind the scenes of each episode. Today we're looking at Season 5, Episodes 17 and 18, which will bring us to the end of the production notes I have for Season 5. But don't worry, this is definitely not the end of Dance Mums Unedited. As always, there will be a link in the description box below which will take you to a PDF of these notes, so you can read through them in further detail. Because there was more to this episode than the producers cared to show. The week begins with the mums and girls arriving back in Pittsburgh. Abby tells the mums that she is incredibly busy and doesn't want to waste any time in Pyramid. Maddie tells everyone about her Grammy performance and then just reveals that both Kathy and Jeanette will be bringing their teams to the competition this weekend. Immediately contradicting herself, Abby wastes time by digging through her merchandise to redress Maddie and Kendall. Apparently she wasn't happy with the length of their pants and made them change. After this debacle, Pyramid can begin. Abby tells Maddie that she received even more applause than Madonna at the Grammys. Jill asks Abby about how Kendall's music video is going, but Abby has nothing to report. Holly invites all of the cast to Nia's music video premiere on Saturday. Through gritted teeth, Abby says that it sounds great. She informs the group that Maddie has won with all of her solos this season, but the group only has a 60% win rate. One by one, she instructs each of the girls to tell her what they have accomplished and learned this season. On the bottom of the pyramid is Kendall, much to Jill's anger. She is followed by Mackenzie, Nia, Jojo, Kalani and Maddie on top. Gianna enters the room with an envelope which has the words, and the winner is, written on it. Abby assumes that it was sent on Kathy's behalf and refuses to acknowledge it. She then assigns solos to Kendall and Kalani, called Rise and Fall, and bleeding out. The group dance is called No Sign of Life. Throughout the day, Abby spends most of the rehearsal time outside of the studio. Apparently she's not focused on rehearsing the dance, instead choosing to work on other business and organising a costume for Kalani. Upstairs, the mums complain that the girls have too much on their plate this week. The mums think this because this was the week when the girls were also competing at Jump Dance Convention. Kira runs down into the studio to grab the envelope that Gianna brought in, returning to open it with the other mums. Sure enough, it's from Kathy. Holly tells the mums that she might have been too strong in her enthusiasm for Nia's music. The mums try to assure her that they are supportive of Nia. Jill does tell Holly, however, that the constant posting on social media made the music video seem like a competition. Then Kalani enters the room holding a bouquet of apples from Kathy. The mums simply laugh in response and decide to take playful selfies with the bouquet. I think it goes without saying that it was the producers who often brought in these gifts on behalf of rival teams in order to build tension. If I were the mums, I'd be laughing at their weird ways of creating suspense too. Over at the Candy Apples, Kathy introduces Shari and Tara to the team, a mother and daughter who have attended the studio for years. She claims that she has already played some pranks on the ALDC team this week by sending the invitation and apple bouquet. Again, I'm pretty sure that the producers told her to say this. Why would she bother wasting the time and spending her own money on shipping things from Ohio to Pennsylvania? It would just be so much easier if the producers sent something on Kathy's behalf. Kathy begins to work on their group dance, The Patriot. She then reveals to the group that Vivi will be joining in the dance this week. Kathy begins to cry, revealing that the dance tells the story of how Vivi recently became an American citizen. She mentions that Abby had previously attacked her for the way that she went about adopting Vivi. This is something that Kathy has mentioned outside of the show too. I can't imagine why Abby would think that Vivi's adoption process is any of her business. While they are rehearsing, Jeanette and her team show up. They work out that the two teams have overlapping rehearsal times in the same venue. Kathy is friendly towards the team, but seems irritated at sharing the space. Jeanette's team tries to watch the candy apples through a window, so Kathy leads her team through a fake routine, so as to not give anything away. Jeanette announces that BDA will be performing a hip-hop group called D-Town. She also tells the team about Ava's solo, called Hurtful Words. Ava, who is nursing a swollen and bruised knee, tells everyone that she wants to dance for anyone who has been attacked by Abby, including Nia and Chloe. Meanwhile, at the ALDC, Maddie spends time in Studio B, being interviewed by the local news. 
Holly decides to call Jeanette and invites her to Nia's premiere. Gina Urso Durdash, the owner of Energy Dance Competition, jumps on the call, revealing that she is with BDA this week. Holly informs the mums that Abby sent her cryptic messages regarding Nia's premiere. Then Mikey calls Holly, telling her that he has a full edit of Nia's music video for her to watch. When Holly steps out to look at it, the mums speculate about how Nia's video will be perceived by viewers. They say that Holly's demeanour usually comes across as rather conservative, but Nia's video doesn't seem like it will match that. Abby enters rehearsals and is immediately engrossed in her phone. She tells the girls that the routine is the worst group dance she has ever seen, but Maddie points out that she's not paying attention to the group at all. Gianna even tells her that the group dance seems perfect to her. Kendall calls the mums into the studio, where Abby announces that she wants to see the group performed three dances at a time. She compares the two trios of girls and rants about the kind of behaviour that she expects both at the competition this weekend and at the jump convention. The mums wonder how Abby can possibly expect the girls to win both at the regular competition and at jump. Then Abby calls all the staff, students and parents into Studio A, reassuring them that she will not be abandoning the ALDC Pittsburgh while she opens her LA branch. Given her words here, it's kind of ironic that the Pittsburgh studio was the location that she decided to completely shut down. Now all that's left of the ALDC is the much smaller LA location, where Abby moved her studio to in 2017. The next day, Jojo is missing, and the girls wonder where she is. Abby is annoyed that she isn't there, and considers taking her out of the group. She tells Kalani that she better not let Ava beat her again, and then tells Kendall to prove that she is Abby's number two girl. In the viewing room, the mums reveal that Jess and Jojo are organising passports for the Australia trip next week. Abby enters the room to show the mums some costumes, and claims that she will be attending Nia's premiere. She then makes a snide remark about Nia's dad, Evan, being okay with Nia's backup dancers wearing nothing but underwear. Holly compares it to Maddie's role in Elastic Heart when she danced with Shia LaBeouf. Jill claims that Nia isn't Sia, which infuriates Holly. Holly then calls Jess, inviting her to come with her to spy on BDA's rehearsals, because none of the other mothers are willing to join her. At the end of the day, Jess and Jojo arrive at the front desk to find that they have completely missed the rehearsal. The Candy Apples rehearsal begins with Kathy announcing Tessa as their soloist. Her solo, The Scarlet Letter, is a nod to her mother's betrayal when she claimed that she wanted to be on Abby's team. Liza says that she and Abby once had a conversation about her daughter's ears. She explains how it led to Abby's rude comment at their last competition. When BDA shows up ahead of schedule, Kathy proposes that the two teams perform their dances for one another. She seems rather unimpressed with BDA's hip hop routine. Still, she tells her team only to perform the first half of their routine in order to keep Vivi's involvement a secret. Then Holly, Jess and Jojo enter the room. Holly invites the BDA team to Nia's premiere and also out to drinks later in the evening. Meanwhile, Jojo spills the beans about the concept for the ALDC group dance. That evening, the mums from all three teams show up to a brewery for cocktail hour. Gina and Jeanette defend performing a hip-hop routine at this week's competition. Liza shouts about Abby's mistreatment of her daughter. Meanwhile, Jill and Melissa claim that the mums from the other teams would gladly drop everything to join the ALDC. Liza accuses Jess of being a bully, but then makes a rude comment about Jojo. Holly jumps to Jojo's defence, telling her to leave the kids out of it. Before the teams leave for the evening, Gina manages to throw a pretzel across the table. Meanwhile, Kathy and Vivian go out for ice cream. Kathy asks Vivi a bunch of questions about how she feels about dancing on the team again, but Vivi seems more interested in the ice cream. They discuss Vivi receiving her citizenship, and then she makes them both laugh by taking huge bites out of her ice cream. Kathy then digs into Vivi's personal life, asking her which boy she likes. The following day, Kathy reminds her team to stay focused during rehearsals in order to win for Vivi. When BDA rehearses, Jeanette is worried about Ava's knee, so she only gets her to run her solo once full out. Over at Nia's video premiere, Kathy and Vivi arrive, presenting Holly and Nia with a gift. Nia and Holly run into Melissa, Jill, Kira, Jess and Jojo. Melissa and Jill seem particularly concerned about missing parts of the jump convention and keep checking the time. Holly and Evan give little speeches before everyone watches the video, 
At a few points while the video is playing, Abby scrunches up her face in disgust. After the viewing, Nia steps on stage and thanks everyone who was involved, including Abby. Abby then steps on stage and says some kind words to Nia. Melissa, Jill and Kira immediately rush off back to jump. Meanwhile, the Candy Apples and BDA swarm around Nia to congratulate her. Kathy tells her that the video is the best thing to come out of the ALDC by a mile. At the competition, the three teams arrive. However, most of the ALDC girls are missing, with only Nia and Jojo showing up. When Abby arrives, a fight breaks out about Nia being excluded from the group. To Holly's disgust, Abby brings up the death of Nia's grandfather as a reason why she left Nia out of things in the past. Abby then shouts her honest thoughts about the music video, telling Holly that some parts were absolutely inappropriate. Holly and Jess then storm off together in the direction of the green room. The ALDC enters and sits awkwardly in the dressing room. The mums inform Holly and Jess that there is a delay at jump because the girls need to stay to get their scholarships. Abby then turns to Nia and Jojo in order to fill in for the soloists. Jess suggests that Jojo should improvise and Gianna tells Nia to perform her routine, Never Knew. When the girls and Abby leave, the mums begin to argue about the soloists not being there. This is presumably the scene where Holly yells the iconic line. Do a solo. Holly says that she had no idea that the girls would still be at jump today. The mums receive text messages from their daughters, saying that they don't know why they're being held up at jump. The mums wonder if Abby is the one forcing them to stay there. In the Candy Apples green room, Kathy is insulting Ava's body, and then BDA enters the room. Things get awkward when the two teams realise that they are sharing a green room. When Nia performs her solo, she receives a high clap from Abby. And despite improvising her solo, Jojo has a lot of confidence on stage. Back in the green room, the candy apples burst in and throw foam stars in the air, claiming that Nia is the star of the team. Kathy becomes furious when Abby tries to video record her, threatening to pack up and leave the competition. Melanie and Liza have to calm her down. Melissa is outraged when one of the Candy Apples mums makes a comment about Kenzie's music videos, so she kicks her out of the room. The girls who competed at Jump then rush into the room and scurry to get ready for the group dance. As they dance, the mums seem thrilled with how they're performing. At awards, the ALDC group places first in the junior small group division and first place overall. Jojo Solo places third in the junior division, but Nia's solo doesn't place. Ava wins first in the junior division and first overall. Tessa doesn't place with her solo, nor does BDA's group. The Candy Apples routine wins first in the senior division. While it's not mentioned in these notes, the Dance Mums wiki says that the Candy Apples group dance came second in the overall groups. Afterwards, Abby wheels a cake into the green room, decorated with the words Hollywood or bust. Abby reveals that she issued an apology for Jojo's improvised routine. As the team exits back out into the hallway, the Candy Apples and Broadway Dance Academy are waiting for them. Jeanette thanks Abby for inspiring Ava's solo. Jess then makes a comment about Vivi's technique in the Candy Apples group dance. This is when Kathy and Abby begin to scream at one another. At Abby's request, Jill takes out her phone and begins to record the confrontation. Sick of being filmed, Kathy snatches the phone and storms off. The mums try to get the phone back, but are pulled apart before things can get physical. The mums then re-enter the ALDC green room, where Abby calls the police to report the incident. She tells Jill that she should file a police report, and the pair rush out of the building. And with that, we've reached the end of episodes 17 and 18. Unfortunately, I don't have production notes for any episodes of season 5 beyond this. Back when I got the production notes off eBay, there was also a binder that contained the Australian episodes. I suspect that that binder could contain the production notes for the rest of the season. And sadly, I have no idea where those notes ended up. If anyone out there happens to know, I would love to have a look at them. But in the meantime, Dance Mums Unedited isn't over. After all, I still have production notes for season six and seven. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.